Woo! Well, well, well. Wow, wow. Here wow. we are. It is the final class. It's our last day at Canlis Community College. Um, this is it. If you've been a student, you've followed us for the last six weeks or so. Uh, you've gone through field trips, we've intramurals in the parking lot, you've watched cooking shows, uh, you've watched us get in a costume and, and, uh, <laughs> and drink some fun wines. Um, and this is it. This, this is the is finale. It. This, this is, is our last, the last class. last class ever. Finals week. Let's get crazy. Just joking. That's we'll, what we'll, happens, right? We'll at community crazy. college? Yeah. Community. Well, <laughs> here with me again is Erica Big Cat Katubig, um, a sommelier here and server for three years at Canlis. It's like going on four. Going, like on going on four. Let's call four. it four. We'll call it, let's call it, let's round up. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So that's that. We're here, back in the office. We're in our cellar, and uh, tonight's uh, appropriately and maybe even fitting. We should be doing this in the boiler room, but this is Wine Fight Club. Mm -mm. Yeah. Ding ding! <laughs> wine Fight Club. <laughs> so what we really sort of like wanted to do was have this comparison of wines um, of great varieties, one from the old world, one from the new world, um, and to be objective with them and just sort of like. Uh, uh, put them in glasses that are, or wine bottles that come to you that are uh, co somewhat unmarked, so you have an, not have an idea of what's in them, but really giving it an, a fair chance to evaluate the wine for the quality in the glass. And um, that, that ultimate vote of which one you prefer is yours to make. So today, it's pretty fun. What we'll do, uh, like we did you know, a couple of weeks ago, is have an opportunity to vote, and you'll be doing that online uh, you can follow along on our on our Instagram page where we'll put a poll and two wines side by side. And after you've gone through and tasted through the wines, hit up the, the, the Instagram page, watch the live feed and then or the live story, and then you'll have a chance to vote on the poll which wine you prefer, whether it's wine A or wine B. But like all things, we'll do it here. We'll, we'll make our case for it. We'll talk about these wines and which ones we enjoyed, what we like about them. Uh, and we'll go from one round to the next, starting with Chardonnay, um, Pinot, and then finishing with Syrah. Chef is here today. I'm so... <laughs> hey, yeah, we wrangled yes. Chef. So because it's our last <laughs> class and um, we've all been working very hard, Chef has been working the hardest, I think, maybe. Maybe harder than some other people. I will, <laughs> like myself. But we're so excited to welcome in here. And, I don't know what um, I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have any questions no. about anything no. wine or food related, <laughs> yeah. uh, feel free to add them into our... <laughs> I'll answer with my preference, but not the, necessarily the correct answer. Well, oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair um, enough. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, lastly, before we, we finish up um, our introduction here, I just want to say that uh, not just at this being the last class, uh, we'll, we'll finish strong, and next week will be finals week. <gasps> A scavenger week, hunt. Scavenger hunt. And the grand prize for a team. Um, 5K. 5K. $5,000. Right on, huh? Which is really exciting. $5,000 gift card. Gift let's be, let's be oh. real what? here. $5,000 $5, gift box. card. Canless gift card. Yeah, canless right box. Canless okay. cash. With a Canless with a cash. <laughs> we'll see if we can, we can find way, more ways to, to like. You can buy at least this bottle. <laughs> wow. Ooh. Maybe mm. another bottle. Maybe, maybe, maybe pick something from Bert. Or Bert's. maybe this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, great. Brady's like right in front yeah. of the, our age no Riesling to, cellar, yeah, so, yeah, so we're maybe. all set We there. should move him immediately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some of these are screw tops, so they're going to be done by the end of... Uh, okay. Well, why don't show. we start? You know, like, part of the instructions were in your box when you got them. The wines are chilled. You kept them in the refrigerator overnight. You brought them out minutes before we started. And what we like to do is I like to have the wines chilled or whites chilled um, or cold. And then the reds that come out just behind that to serve them chilled, right? That's sort of a preference. That's how we would sort of ideally in a perfect world have an opportunity to have uh, both wines uh, at their optimal drinking temperature. And then we'll, we'll evaluate them. So that's what they all look like. And I will say you that- You got different um, sort of like vessels that they were coming in, but that's how we'll drink it. I know that you have wings at home. Yes. We have wings as well. But we're going to try to keep our palates on the fresher side. So feel free to eat and 
and go back and forth with your tasting. Um, but we're going to wait until the end to try our wings and um, to find out which one of our wings we like the most. So uh, let's yeah. start. Well, and the wings aren't made to be pairings necessarily. Yeah. What we wanted to do in the spirit of Fight Club is to have wings and to compare them with three different types of sauces. Um, something that we would like normally enjoy and crush some wings together. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to crush some wings. Yeah, That's, and sort of like no that question. preference for it. Um, so two things that we love, both wine and wings. So this is, all right, let's get started. This is Fight Club. Let's so what we've done is we poured out our white wines. Um, and I've got mine sort of marked here. This is wine B for me, and this is wine A. Um, and I want you to do the same at home, to follow along and to pour some wines. Um, and let's start breaking the numbers. Let's really have a fair chance to evaluate them. So Erica, why don't you start with wine uh, for round one, Can wine A. Okay. I know I'm supposed to just take one, but uh, but smelling them side by side has its merits too, I feel. Oh my gosh, I really love, I love Chardonnay as a yeah. grape itself. And I think these two wines sh are showing in this like really sort of interesting and gorgeous way. Um, so wine number one, we're not saying what the wine is, right? Until the end, or are we? Yeah, you have that envelope at home, so you can open up the envelope, see what they're at, where they're at, and which wines are which. Um, okay, so I'm... Th not that we're trying to sort of like keep that a secret, we just want to evaluate the wines for what we feel like the merit is. Yeah. yeah. Um, so wine number one has that really beautiful sort of golden apple that I come to expect from a Chardonnay. Yeah. Um, especially this like cooler, sort of uh, more on the ripe-esque side, like some ripe tones, some cool tones. And I love that there's this kind of like background of like sea, like sea salt mm. kind of air in it. I haven't yeah. even tasted it yet, but I'm really excited. I don't know if you're smelling this at home, but the difference in just the noses of these two are so apparent to me. Um, so kind of like in, uh, Glass B, sort of like cooler toned lemon and like kind of a like green apple. Whereas here, mine A has that like gold apple, right? Kind of like little yeah. clementine on the on the back. But mm -hmm. I'm gonna taste it. Okay, yeah. let's do it. I love your notes on the nose. You've been such a great taster. And I think like all things wine, a lot of information can be picked up on the nose uh, before you get to the palate. And you've always been one that's been, had this wonderful ability to communicate what you're smelling. And those things are brought up through senses throughout our life or time in the kitchen, or just like your, your and our own love for food, oh, right? You're so, so good at that. And what do you get once you put it on the palate? What did you get? I am getting more, like on the palate, I get more of like a, a a slight honeysuckle, like a tiny little bit of florality, but but a nuttiness too, like a hazelnutty kind of like slight buttery tones. Um, and I think it's it also finishes really pretty. Um, kind of also just like very, very light. Um, and I'm spitting today because someone told me to. <laughs> but um, what I love about this is that the palette is, even though it's a, it's a wine that has some breath to it, so it's not just like tasting water, the palate still fills out, like the flavor still fills out in your mouth, but it's not so overwhelming. You want to have another sip, you know? It's not like you take one sip and you're like, Oh, that was so much alcohol, or oh, yeah. that was so much of anything. Like, I think this is this wine has a lot of elegance in it, you know? Yeah, I get it's that. It's really beautifully made. It's yeah. got wonderful texture to it. It's got a certain creaminess. I love you sort of like reinforcing the, the wine notes that you would get on the nose. Mm. You see it on the palate, a prickle of spice to it. And that's what makes Chardonnay like fantastic, right? It's a <sighs> transmitter of things that are around it's an environment. Uh, and then you an influence of the winemaker, whether it's oak to calm the the sort of like rougher edges or or like uh, like sharper edges of what chardonnay could be like and then and then create that soft beautiful land, landing for it yeah yeah so that's wine number that's round that one wine a that was a yeah all wine right a. yeah 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 do you want to get into b yeah 
you know, and do the same thing at home. Like I, I'm going back and forth to mm. see the differences between them. And this here, just on the nose, it's a bit more striking about what I pick up. Less fruit driven or fruit forward with it, but I get all these other notes to it. Yeah, so less, it kind of reminds me of something that's a little, little dirty or a little stinky, right? Where it's not just like overtly fruity, but I get um, notes of like chalk and limestone and you know more earthy and gravelly components than I do fruit up front. Totally. But like young youthful wines, there always be that element of fruit. So with this, I get more citrus notes. I get that yellow apple, maybe something that's just ripening. Um, but an early part of the season where it's not, you know, maybe on the green side of that. Yeah. So, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see. What do you say? Uh. Mm. It, <laughs> it's sharp. <laughs> it's sharp. Yeah. It's acidic. It's yeah. dry. It's, it's dry. linear. Oh, it's, it's linear. That's a great. Yeah. That's a great yeah. Term. You know, like going back and forth to with with the two wines. I see how there's a certain roundness in wine. What? A. Or a and then, that. like, it was a bit of a shock to my palate just to kind of, not just I have like that more reinforced green apple note, mm. but a certain like, like squeeze of lime juice in it that just sort of like caught me off guard a little bit. <clears throat> You know, behind that, when I get out on the palate and I start to finish off, then I start to see like this minerality, this this grounded, earthy component um, that brings me into the wine, right? Acidity that's still, for me, persistent and striking. And when I talked about oak on the first one, I don't get any on this here. Mm -mm -mm, not in the same way. Mm -mm. When you talk about a wine being linear, so we talk about textures in our mouths, you know? And where yeah. Wine one has this has a rounded edge to it. So when you get it in your palate, kind of like swish it around, see that it comes up like up into your mouth and like coats your mouth. Whereas wine B sort of like, it's, it's more into the, the, the flavor of its, itself is sort of more into the middle of your palate, if that makes any sense. Yeah. And it's not quite as, as filling that texturally <laughs> yeah, yeah no it all it all makes sense right mm -hmm. this is chardonnay one is from california and one is from burgundy and one so one's from france and i think you start to see some differences between those two wines now if you're at home and you've not sort of revealed those wines um now's the time to go and open up the envelopes and see what's there you start to notice maybe a bit more overtly what's the difference between the two one um where it's done as a domestic product, something from the United States, where you start to see the winemaker's influence uh, and you see more tropical notes. And then the other, a, a much cooler environment when you look at something from Burgundy. And stylistically, what they'll do is maybe lean more towards acidity and then fruit leading the wine. What's up, Brady? What do we you got? We have a question. Jennifer is asking if trying one first influences your decision on which you'll end up preferring. Yeah, wow, sometimes. That's <laughs> such a good question. Yeah, that's a great question. Sometimes, and usually we'll do like, um, have enough in the glass and go back and forth, right? Pick out what you like on the nose and then and then evaluate the wine on the palate. These are both really high quality wines, so we've made sure that those things are aligned. Uh, we've picked wines that are similar as far as what vintages might look like. Um, but as far as uh, stylistic differences, examples of one from the new world and one from the old world that makes sense. Um, and maybe may represent that broader scope of what these wines generically would have. Something from California, something from Burgundy, where they fit. I, I think the, the importance there being, Jennifer, that uh, taste back and forth. And yeah. so, like Nelly was saying, after he had wine A and then he went to wine B, he, it was almost startled his palate, you know? And we, we put the wines in these orders so that you could experiment a lot more. Um, and so when you go back after tasting wine B and you go back to wine A, you realize just like how rich it is, you know, and how, mm -hmm. how full. And it's, it's kind of, that's the fun of it. That's what we talk about calibrating your palate when we talk yeah. about like wine tasting, right? Yeah. Talk about calibrating and when we professionally uh, <laughs> uh, blind taste, uh, we often take the highest um, ac acidity wine and coat our entire mouths with it. So it's like we're set. My mouth knows what the highest acid could possibly be, and now yep. I'm set to taste all of these wines for the rest of the, 
the session, right? Yeah, and, and usually when we start to find markers in wine and get, calibrate ourselves in our own palates, we'll find that old world wines from cool climates, very neutral, not seeing any oak, will tend to have um, the higher or the highest of the cities of, of wines that we're looking for, just generically as a, a big overstatement. Uh, and then when we start to scale back and find wines that are from different parts of the world, it's easier to identify oak, it's easier to identify levels of alcohol, uh, and maybe easier to identify alcohol when it falls short of that high mark. Mm -hmm. In this case, wine B, high in acidity, wine A, moderate, moderately high, but just moderate, yeah. Awesome, so why don't we do this? Why don't we go into the next wine? If you're at home and you're following along, um, bring up more glasses, don't waste anything. For us, we'll come back to them, um, but maybe we'll just like, keep this on the side for now and then we'll jump into the next set Are you, are you voting right now or no? Uh, you, are they voting? Yeah. Voting no, no. Live. Voting is live? Voting are we voting? No, we're gonna vote at the end. But are you gonna, you should, are you gonna like, sec are you secretly picking your... Uh, are we, let's see. Yeah, we have something to write it onto. You think? Yeah, I know we have on, our paddles on. here. I have pad we have paddles. I made us paddles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, well. Just file it for later. Okay. Yeah, we don't want to influence any of the votes or no. or anything like that. Not that we yeah. are, but so we want to like bring it back and then have like one last. If you're following at home, vote on Instagram if you have Instagram. If yeah. not, no shade. Yeah. No. Just like pick your favorite. That's yeah. the Fight Club. Cool. Awesome. Eat some wings. Eat, Eat some, some wings. <laughs> so this uh, is round two. I've got wine A. Wine A. Ooh. Save some for me. <gasps> oh, we got it. some. It's on the side there. They yeah. should be. You should. There you go. And this is wine. B. Wine B. It's good. Ooh. Pinot. Oh. And maybe, you know, when you go to white wine and you start looking at some of these white wines, um, Chardonnay can be, you know, when you think about where you're coming from and what to buy in the stores. They, uh, it's represented in every wine region that you go and you visit, and every country has their version of Chardonnays. And we just sort of like uh, put put that out there to see like uh, what we would feel like could be good comparisons to it. M more the same with Pinot Noir, where we're looking at a classic growing region like 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 France, and then an up and coming um, region, but maybe more more or something that we're proud about, um, as something in the Northwest. So this, the next one is from Oregon. So wine A and wine B. Get it in the glass and start swirling it. Uh, you know, the other day someone was like, what's your favorite grape ever? Yeah. Oh, and it's like so hard to choose just one, you know? What's your favorite grape? Oh, no, don't. <laughs> I know. Stop it. I was going to say it's Chardonnay, but yeah. <sighs> then I smell these and I'm like, they're both so good. I mean, for us, it's really emotional, right? It is something that, like, it's in the moment. It's where you're, where, what you're eating, who you're with, um, the time of year, the time of day, time of day. <laughs> the, I mean, all of those things of add meal, up and yeah. make sense. Do you want to take wine A? I'll go with wine A. Yeah. yeah. What's up, Brian? I know. I, you probably can hear me. I may have screwed up. I put the, the, the two. Should I take them off of Instagram right now? Should it, because we have the labels up. Oh, that's fine. That's yeah. fine? Yeah. That's fine. They have they have envelopes at home that say what the labels are. Or okay. What yeah. The so for them at home that are following along, they should open it up, see what's there. And you're following it up at home, take the envelope, uh, take the card out of the envelope, uh, see what's there in front of you, and then vote which one you want. But sort of like, do that sort of like conscious decision of, adding up what you feel like was your was the better wine based off of what you tasted. Yeah. 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 Ooh. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Mm. It smells awesome. I know, right? it smells so, so good. So both, both, I just want to do them um, maybe more um, this round, just, just as I'm comparing them because I haven't had a chance to taste them yet. But really similar on the nose. One more overtly sort of jumps out as fruity, darker, red fruit, and maybe a little bit of that cola note. And then the other, um, a more soft tone, subtle red fruit. Uh, and then there's something a little earthy again about it. Yeah. A little, like a little funk. You can see, I keep saying that, a little dirty, mm -hmm. but something besides fruit, more umami-like characteristics. Umami. Whether it's earth, whether it's like mushrooms, salsa. whether it's like 
soy sauce, or whether it's just yeah. dirt. 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 I dirt. don't. <laughs> Sorry, that, was, that was one of those things that I was thinking and then just said it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> forest floor. It's oh yeah, oh, that's, a good, that's a good, that's a good uh, trad wine tasting <laughs> Or, or like, saddle leather. Ooh, I, that's you've good. You've been watching. I've been watching. I've been watching. Wow. Classes, at least. <clears throat> you know, with that, uh, with wine A, I just pick up uh, more subtleties on the nose. Yeah, I feel like you know it's still a young wine, but I start to feel like more than just that ripe primary fruit or that threshold of what it would be ripe, I start to pick up notes just that are just behind it. Something that's more integrated and well integrated in what I can see. And I then wine, and yeah, wine B for me just feels like something that hits me up a little bit more forward uh, with fruit and then a ton of spice behind it. But I really enjoy with Pinot Noirs and Chardonnay and things that evolve in the glass more than they do on the palate. These are great varieties that are good examples of what it looks like to have them and continually sort of like um, change oh, over the course of whether it's an hour or two, but yeah. And I think tracking that change has a lot to do with your own exploration at home of your palate. So when you first smell it, you're like, oh, you know, it smells like, like the first one, you know, cherries and mm. you know, uh, like proofing bread or like just a little bit of crust, you know, and then as the night progresses, you'll see that it's like, oh wait, it's not just this or that. Yeah. Now it's smelling like, you know, like day old cherry yeah. pie. And it's, it's interesting because wine itself evolves, not just in the bottle, but in your glass throughout the night. And I love that exploration so much, you yeah. know? And when, when Nelson talks about integration, that's kind of what I'm talking or what he means about like, it's not just cherries in one hand and then, you know, crust in the other. It's like, does this smell like something that it's, that's this one continuous flavor or mm. does it smell like, oh, I can pick out a cherry. Oh, right. I can pick out a thing, you know, and right. that might be for you. It, it is for me like the mark of a really good wine, that integration. Yeah. Yeah. And when I, I've had a chance to taste both wines and you should at home too. Um, and take and, and go along with it. I think we're continuing to move forward. And what I'm starting to see now, as I jump back and forth between these wines, that one's definitely softer, more subtle in its approach to it, and the other uh, more assertive and, and sort of uh, not just forward with fruit, but a little more aggressive as far as what tannin feel like on the palate. A certain amount of weight that hits me right in the middle. Um, I feel like there's a little more oak on it, and I feel like this grip. And and then in, in the very end. Um, something that's like just a little weightier and a little heavier and maybe that's alcohol but we're talking about just a degree or so difference but in these two wines you see how ripe fruit can hold it and maybe that's something that's lighter and linear more linear as far as like red fruit goes um, can hold something a little lighter like ethereally just something oh that's gosh. softer and more elegant yeah you know yeah. what that is that's wine fight club, <laughs> fight club. Ding, 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 in this corner <laughs> From I, Connecticut. I don't know if I could, mm, I know we're supposed to like, be like, oh, I want one so much more than the other. But yeah. I think as a sommelier, I'm like, well, each of them have their places. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they totally you know? do, right? I mean, that's, I think, for us and what we are looking at and what we want to do is to have an opportunity to evaluate wines fairly, um, what standards are yeah. and what they mean for where they come from, and then... Um, treat that vintage with the same amount of respect saying like if this is your best effort at making this wine now i want to see where it goes yes. whether it's something to age or whether it's then something to drink today yeah. and i think these are good examples of delivering at different levels one something that's drinking at a place where it's uh pretty on the nose and soft and subtle on the palate makes way for other different types of cuisine or food that you're going to eat uh, and then the second or another um sort of what much more forward with fruit with fruit something that I wouldn't mind having with an entree um, and something that stands on its own. Yeah, that's how I see it. We've had a couple questions from guests during our canless uh, wine uh, text to yep. And one of the questions that keeps coming up is, what makes a wine, what does it taste like to have a wine that you, you should cellar for a longer time, mm -hmm. you know? And I feel like wine B, for me, 
because the fruit is so forward and because it has so much structure and it's like big and juicy, maybe yeah. in a couple of years when that fruit is like calmed down, it'll be just a gorgeous and like really giving kind of wine, if that makes any sense. Yeah, uh, do you feel that way about this wine? Like I do. Yeah, it's it's young still. Yeah. Uh, I think it is uh, full of flavor. I think it is um, representative of where, of where it's coming from. And I think, um, you know, if there if there's a preference um, and and sort of like the idea of, of seeing it age, I think it follows the same trajectory as the as as the other wine, um, and it's a few years behind. Yeah. But that's but but I wouldn't mind just drinking this now. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean now is dope. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well. We'll Wine go into wine through right. around three. Okay, round three, round three, round three. All right, round so three. Okay. Um, we don't have any more glasses, so we'll see if we just kind of put things away. But um, I, I'm gonna pour it. There you go. Well, we have more wine. Oh yeah, let's do it. I'm gonna drink this. <laughs> mm, okay. Yay! 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 Well, uh, we have lots of conversations about wings right now. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. Okay, There's well, people talking about ask the, us best, some questions. the best wings in Buffalo. Now, there's a lot of like arguing. Oh, well, yes. What are the I best wings arguing. in Buffalo? Um, a? Wine A. People talking about their favorite wings. Oh, yeah. Well, Nelson, what are your favorite wings in Seattle? My favorite wings? Yeah. Uh, I usually when I get on something and I find something I really enjoy, yeah. uh, I stick with it for a while and I like want to like devour it as much of it as I possibly can uh, and then I'm and then I kind of lose track of all the other good wings but yeah. I want to want to think myself as a connoisseur a wing connoisseur <laughs> oh of wings. Yeah. Uh, you would too <laughs> I mean we've had lots of experiences with oh, it we eat wings together so, yeah all the so time. so a lot maybe maybe sort of like the last wing that I had always kind of like gets my attention and keeps me thinking about wings so the last one I had was from from honey court yeah uh, it's the garlic um, yeah the, uh, the the salt and pepper salt and wings, yeah. Um, so that's something I would go to. I like wines from the ID. So, Wei yeah, Kimi Gai, yeah, Kimi Gai. Yep. yep. Those um, butter, out, butter wings. Jackson. Yep. Those wings are awesome. The Quick Mark, Quick Pack, Quick Pack Mark yep. on MLK. That's it. Also good. Yeah. And then the Domino's in my hood. More recently, <laughs> Domino's for the Buffalo. On, -uh. Yes. Are you serious? Girl. No. The Domino's yes. on Othello and MLK. Yes. Are Top five wings in Seattle. Yeah. Whoever is making the wings at the Domino's, and I've had them three. Shout three out times to them. Shout just out. to make sure they're they're really good. Yeah. Yeah. Back back to back to wine. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like let's talk about wings. Ronto, Ronto. Well, well, the last you know I get two more because no. when when I kind of get when I get on some of these things, uh, Bob Bar makes some killer oh, yeah. killer oh, we had this wings. The other day. Yes. Yeah. Like, okay. Because yeah, they are so just good. like like um, they have that fish sauce to it. It's got that sweetness. Oh, it's got yeah. a little stickiness to it. So that cornstarch crunch. <laughs> Ooh. Yum, 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 yum. Oh, goes fresh line on it. I want it hot. Right? I like the flats. That's just a preference, but I mean <laughs> oh the ratio is right. Oh, you no, all know it. We got that technique. Like really like, twist right at the corners. We're like Ooh. shaking up the the comments here. Really? Okay. Why? What do they say? Trend uh, we got someone that's like talking about Burlington that's way up there. Oh my goodness. You know, Kings we are- Hardware wings, they're good wings. Good wings, gonna, yeah, shout out. I'm gonna shamelessly plug- I like uh, that bar, I don't go to Ballard often, but. I really like, I miss the wings at Tanaka-san. R.I.P. Tanaka-san. Uh -huh. Bob, what's up? Uh -huh. Blood Mary, Chainwreck, okay. Cool. Oh my yeah, god. Well, <laughs> well, you know, like we got tons of places. Oh, the Palace Coriander time. Wings? Oh. Those, are, those are good wings. So we good. Have, we, palace? We, yeah, palace. Palace, palace, palace kitchen. kitchen. Uh. We used to, respect. Yeah. Respect. Yes. We used to go to I Palace guess. all the time after a shift. Yeah. Eat a burger, get yeah. some wings. I will, I miss I you, will not leave. Even if I go there and say like, hey, um, I'm just going to... Sandy, I'm chill. I'm just going to have like a burger or split something. I'll do something light. Always in order of wings. wings show up, he's like, you're not going to be happy unless you leave. I love it. Sometimes those two, wings are one incredible. for the next morning. Yeah, yes, yeah. I agree. Right. I miss you, Palace Thomas Kitchen. Thomas done a great job there, yeah. Palace Kitchen, Yeah, we're coming back for you, right. too. Yeah. Shout okay. out to all those places. Now we're okay, back. let's go with... Let's to Wine C. Wine what, the round, minute mark. round three. Round three, Wine, wine A. Wine A. Okay. Big Cat, why don't you take us through these two wines? Yes. 
um, just as you're comparing them side by side. This is mm -hmm. the Syrah Smackdown. Ding ding. Ding 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 um, ding. Yes, yeah. Syrah Smackdown. And you know what? Maybe Syrah's my favorite grape. Just joking. Ooh. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So when I'm thinking about Syrah, right, I, there's a couple different factors. I, you're looking for something dark, darker fruit, mm -hmm. blackberry, black cherry, but you're also looking for a perfumed aspect, the sort yeah. of like higher lavender notes. This is what, these are the things that I'm looking for in a high quality Syrah. Um, and also this like kind of like low tone lamb, like kind of like le I guess leather sorry chef yeah this like, <laughs> this, like kind of like yeah, <laughs> like kind of uh like a oh, like a worn out <laughs> leather smell to it I love it I think it's great so first and foremost they both show what I'm hoping for this like Bla the blacker fruits, like so different than the Pinot Noir, right? Those like, kind of like red, high-toned fruits. These are dark. Oh, I'm going to say that, you know, wine A has some really gorgeous florality to it. Like first and foremost, this like, this like the kind of fluttering purple and white flowers on it that, that are really, really delicious. Whereas um, wine B has... First and foremost, fruit, right? This it's kind of like a compote, like forward-leading compote to it. And they're yeah. but they both smell quite like full and ripen, rich, um, mm -hmm. um, and so they they both smell like really solid Syrahs. <clears throat> um, I want to taste a. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm tracking you when you're going through those notes. And for you following at home, notice how some of these notes that she's saying and talking through. Um, this is Syrah. This is like really great Syrah. One from the old world, one from the new world. And it's a little, the, the line between trying to identify what's old and new maybe is a little more blurred this time around because you're looking at, a, at, at winemakers that are trying to accomplish a few different things. One, Syrah, and call it from the old world, is trying to push the envelope forward where they're looking at um, forward, uh, fruit forward wines. Uh, something that's approachable and easier to drink on the palate. A, a little more about like that, that, that youthful winemaker today that's, that's sort of like generations deep in Europe that's coming for, out and saying like the wine drinkers today want something different. Do I want to age this for a long time? Not necessarily, no. but a few years will go a long way. We have a tasting note question. Yeah. Is wine A, is it accurate to say that wine A has vanilla extract on the nose? Yeah. I get that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Confirmed. I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I get that. I mean, like, there's there's levels of baking spice that come with it. Yeah. And they, they almost like get like a... Like spices. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I get that, that sort of, um, whether it's uh, vanilla to be specific, but an extraction just altogether of, like, fruit. Yes. Um, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, when you ca call the compote early on, that yeah. that's just like, you pick ripe fruit, cook it, together braise it down and bring it down and then and then it really just sort of like caramelizes in its own yeah, self caramelized um, yeah like a caramelized like fruit juice with wine i'm talking about wine b yeah right I all like, right well tell I us yeah yeah i think it's oh my gosh it's it's so interesting i don't mean to like geek out just a little bit it's so interesting that i have such a love of syrah and what nelson is saying about newer or winemakers coming from different regions so you have like old world in France and then new world in Washington and they're trying to make wine for you so mm -hmm. they're trying to make a wine that's similar for your palate which is so magical right um I think it's for me I I, I love I'm not gonna say which one I love right we're not supposed to yet yeah not but, yet not yet <laughs> but Be cool, I pull down I'm the middle very but impressed by how they're both showing today yeah yeah, yeah. or when you think of our own expectations of what these wines from around the world would look like smell like taste like and then we put it in the glass and we're like that they're doing something different or i like what's happening here and this is closer to like 
you know, what I would want from the old world or from the new world, and then um, shift that that expectation just a little bit more towards center, uh, and then and then you're more aligned about either a new an old world producer doing it in a new world style, or then the opposite where an old world excuse me then the opposite where an old world a new world producer, somebody from Washington, um, has the same sort of like uh, a value system of what an old world wine looks like, tastes like, smells like. It's trying to recreate that in our own backyard. So trying to push that forward to have wines that taste similar. So, uh, well, that's like, that's, those are our three wines. Those are the three rounds. Um, and if you're at home and haven't had a chance to vote, you know what's, uh, you know the wines that are in front of you. Uh, and we'll talk more about them. But well, before we do that, exactly. I'm gonna bring out, it's oh, all right. The Wangs? The Wangs, yes. All right. Yay. Chef, are there any other questions? Yeah, but also Elton, our som sommelier, is answering a lot of them, which That's is great. Cool. Thank you, Elton. Thank Shout you, Elton. Elton. Thank you, Elton. Um, Love that guy. He's answering all the technical questions, and I'm just like answering the like. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> questions. So I need those. napkins. Oh. So, right honest, like, do wings go well with wine? Not really. Yeah, not. you know, like <laughs> I, I like I would do them with like some Riesling, um, and maybe some uh, you know higher acid white wines. But maybe that's kind of like sounds like what champagne. I would drink normally. That's just what you would drink. I would, I would drink like champagne, fried chicken, fried, fried chicken. chicken, chicken. And champagne? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Definitely fried chicken and champagne. Yeah, yeah. that but is. But also, like, drink what you like with what like you want to eat. Oh my like, gosh. Sweet or dry? Dry. Riesling. Dry. Dry. Yeah. Um, Whew. but it's kind of spicy. Are uh, yeah. Some of them, yeah. Kwan if, sauce if they, is spicy. If if that has spice, you know those. That's when it's ex uh, acceptable to have, yeah. uh, or go for something with a little bit of, a little bit of sweetness, right? That's the that's uh, the piece of, uh, that wine and food pairing that gives it more context, where you have, something that can um, can reach across yeah. and match that. So if it's something that's got heat to it or spice. You offset it with something that's got some sweetness and sugar. That's like the synergy that you're looking for in a pairing. I mean, but to re to be real, we yeah. did the wings because we were like, it's the last class. Yes. More charcuterie boards. Finals week. Yeah. Just eat some wings. We'll do like three three wing sauces and. I mean, that's that fun. was that yeah, was yeah. perfect. I mean, yeah. we went through like you remember we, originally we thought of like oh, what would a charcuterie board yeah, look like, like for the last for class? And we're like, I was like, nah, it's just wings. No yeah, wings. Yeah. Like, this what do we want to eat? This, it's as much for us as it is for everyone else. Yeah, yes. yeah. And this is this is like a great representation of what that all looks like and feels like. Yeah. So, Finals week. Anyways, if for you at home that are watching, um, stay in it. Keep drinking the wines. If you haven't voted, do it. We Otherwise, we're wings. just going to reveal what we have here. We'll go through the wings real quick. Yeah, Brady, take us like through. The, bu the buffalo sauce. A good okay. buffalo sauce has butter in it. Sorry to the dairy-free people. But <laughs> we got some, like, Frank's Red Hot with... And some of, like, our fermented hot sauce with bu uh, butter. Yeah. The uh, honey togarashi is, like, my favorite right rib now. sauce, actually. So it's uh, honey, white balsamic, and togarashi. What, what is that? It sounds Togarashi weird. is a uh, Japanese spice. It's like a seven spice blend. Okay. Um, so lots of things in that. Um, great on ribs and wings. And then Quan sauce. Shout out Quan. Quan Money. K Money. He's our accountant. And he, uh, earlier this year, pre COVID, had me over and was like, I want to show you my favorite wings. My, my, or my yeah. fav famous wings. And so he grilled these. Uh, and I was like, Quan, we can't do a wing show without. Quan sauce. Mm -hmm. So shout out Quan. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> someone someone asked me if they're gluten free in the background. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> but he he was like really hesitant to give the recipe. I was like, I have to make this for mm. three hundred kits. So, um, all right. So do you, back to wine. do you recommend we try like one wing with every sauce? Is that the the deal? Can I just? Uh, no, one? I gave you extra sauces to dip, but no, it's just uh, it's just to, like coat coat the stomach. Mm -hmm. It's a bridge. It's, it's a time buyer for the show. But I think that the people are wanting to know. Well, let's take what some our questions. Favorite, yeah. Favorite one, uh, no, I think we should get into like 
the wines and like okay. did the reveal. A few people have looked, yeah. but also we should. Uh, Oh man, yeah. yeah. Find what would you so we should go round one. Round one. This is what we have. Wine. Actually, real quick. I think Quan sauce is the favorite. Quan sauce? Yeah. No surprise. Really? <laughs> I'm like, I'm just like, is it quick this scroll one? and everyone's like, Quan sauce, Quan sauce. Quan. Yeah. This so cool. with. Yeah. Oh yeah, I want to eat some of that. Okay, so um, round one. For the white ones, the Chardonnays, we went with... Right, we uh, round, round one results right now, if you're watching at home. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. The wine um, A was the Copain Chardonnay, and one wine B was the Domaine Puree uh, Sauvignon Le Bon from Burgundy. Uh, Wait, and say, that, say that one more time, because I, I missed it. The Chardonnay from Burgundy is from an area called Sauvignon Le Bon. And that's, that's... Wine B. Wine B. Yep. And wine A is from California. Yeah. It's from Sonoma. Yeah. And this is uh, done by Copain Winery. So they're both Chardonnays. They're both yes. Chardonnays. And we are, so I don't know the results yet. Is Brian around that we can talk about it? I'm a, yeah, I'm around. Okay, well, let's see. <laughs> Big Cat, um, on the count of three, you and I, we haven't cast our vote yet. Haven't. We will say this which. Camera? Wine we prefer. We'll Maybe. go Wait. middle. We'll go middle camera. Middle camera. Right here. Right here. Yeah. Right here. On the count of three. One, two, three. B. What? Oh. Twinsies. Twinsies. Oh, okay. B. Why, why'd you like B? Um. Wait. B was the one from France. Yeah. 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 Why did I like it? Well, I liked it because um, because it it was lighter. I liked it because it had mineral, and I liked it because it's really. Chuggable. <laughs> yeah. It's not he it's not too heavy on the palate and it's really refreshing and I think I'm putting it on the line right now. I think that it's gonna be the best wine to pair with these wings. Personally. I think so. Yeah, I kinda of the same. I I liked it. I think um I think a little bit of oak went a long way for me with the Compagne Chardonnay. And I'm not exactly <laughs> sure about what their what that regiment looks like, but I like, especially if it's a starter, something neutral something high acid, something that gets my palate calibrated for something for the next bite. And a lot of times, wines that sort of fit that mold where it's, where it's um, uh, some earthy components, minerality, and then fruit behind it, always sort of is my preference. Uh, but that's where I've come. So, uh, uh, what, what do we have here? Uh, the people have spoken. Uh, wine A, 46%. Wine B, 54%. Yes! Okay, uh, well. So everyone. So, if so you, close. If you didn't yeah. hear at home, wine B was the popular vote. 54%. Yeah. No need for a recount. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon. We're like, no need for a recount. Uh, 54%. We're just going to leave it there. Mm. Wine B. Good job, Use people. wings. I yeah. tell you. Okay, money sauce on fire. A little on the spicy side. Yeah, too spicy for you. Is this <laughs> Oh, it's too spicy. Oh, look home, at how. This is Nelson cracking. The craziest thing just happened. You yeah. missed it. Yeah. What? Uh, I laughed and a piece flew out. <laughs> and then I ate right on my hand and I had to eat it oh because it was on my uh, hand. We're six feet away. <laughs> Good thing. Okay, um, round. Two, wine A and wine B. Ding ding. Oh, that that is a little spicy. Oh, oh my god. Okay, so. to be fair, okay. uh, hold on. Like let's let's walk through this. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I'm gonna go. say that it's not that. I mean, Nelson is like very sensitive. I mean, he has one of he's like an amazing palate, and it's a very sensitive one. <laughs> and so like things that right. we I think is like very spicy, like he would like blow his top like. I feel like it's not, it's not that spicy. That's what I'm saying. Ugh. Yeah, like number two spice for Nelson is like number 25 spice for everyone else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No shit. I'm, yeah. No shit. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Filipino wine. This Hawaii. palette is made yeah, for burgundy sweet. and <laughs> sensitive. Yeah. And because the, the minutiae within wine is just the smallest like differences in between. Don't give yeah. him any. His don't hands give are so anything hot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't hold the hot. Yeah, and just a little. F I just want to. My hands are so Okay. Second round. Ra okay, second the round. The Battle of Pinot Noir. 
And um, let's see, one from the old world, one from the new world. Mm -hmm. Old world, one was an A. Uh, it says 2014 on the bottle. You know, it was two, it's 2015 that we went through. This was a bottle that we just needed to sort of like uh, fill the spot because again, labels. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But we wanted to make sure to have a bottle just so you could see the label. And then and then the Pinot Noir is done by Lingua Franca out of Oregon. Yay! Uh, it's Avni, it's a 2017. Yeah. So, um, let's talk about, um, let's, let's, right, right, let's quick, go ahead and vote. Yeah. Which one's A, which one's B, one more time? Burgundy yeah. is A. From France is wine A. And uh, Oregon, Lingua Franca, Avni is wine B. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay. Wait. All right. I Did know. We're, okay. So I know we're supposed to say like, oh, this one is my favorite, or this one is better than this one, and stuff. Yeah, but why do you prefer it? Oh, uh, you know, this one's really it's hard close. for me to choose. Yeah. Because I love Lingua Franca wines yeah. so much. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Are we doing this? Yeah. Okay. 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 Are you okay. ready? <laughs> okay. On the count of three. Okay. One. Two. two three. three. Ooh. Well, she, we both went with A. Oh. That's all right, though. Shows uh, me, yeah. Well, you know, I but think. The thing is think they're so close in they're my mind. So close, and they actually mirror each other in so many different ways. I know, I know. When I think about um, uh, winemaking technique and uh, just the philosophy all together, I see how how um, Avni and Lingua Franca, we talked about his trajectory, will get there, and that's where it's headed. Uh, you see just a difference. You talked about vintages here, 17 versus what would be 15. Uh, just a softening of a few years really makes a big difference. Oh, yeah, the softening. Of, yeah. yeah. But I think the kind of the ethos of both of them are so similar. Mm -hmm. You know, the fruit is like as restrained as, as you'd like for it mm. to be. And I just love Lingua Franca wine so much. This one was a really tough one for me. Mm. I was like, oh. Um, and of course, Lingua Franca is done, um, it, it's coming out of Oregon, Yolamity, uh, Larry Stone, who is like mm -hmm. a good friend to Canlis, and I love that wine. Yeah, it's <sighs> got style. You know, when I think of like so these wines, style. they're all wines I really, really enjoy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, um, sort of unfair at times to put them as a comparison or pick one over the other, but that's where we're at today. But okay, breaking news. Uh, this just in. Tell us! Uh, the people have spoken. Brian Canlis. Tell us. The red, I think they can hear me when I speak this loudly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just over here just drinking. The red random, burgundy. Random wine yeah. Wine A, 45%. <gasps> Winner, wine Lingua B, Franca. 55%. Oh, oh my gosh. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. told so, you. People disagree with you. Yeah. No, I mean, I, that's... that's a great no wine. Again, no that's a, for that's no a need great for recount. Again, that's a great wine. Oh, we're yeah. accepting our defeat. We're sort of like yeah. going back and forth and sort of like seeing yeah. what works yeah. for us. No stalling. <laughs> <laughs> no stalling. <laughs> no wasting money. Round three. Let's get it over. We are going with the Syrah Smackdown. So wine three looks like this. Ooh. Wine A. Oh, wait. Olivier Domaine. Yeah. Saint-Joseph. Saint-Joseph, Syrah from the Northern Rhone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And wine B, Curlew, Yakima. Black Rock. Washington State. Yeah. Um, let's see. Brady, you've had a chance to try through yeah. some of these wines, chef, huh? Yeah, chef, no, chef. Brady yeah. would not taste the Washington Syrah. Oh, well, well let's, get the, let's get that for him. Let's make sure he can get some. What a um, brat. Wait, wait, wait. I am only drinking the, the, the old Get world in here, one. Brady. Oh my <laughs> gosh! Get in here. What a brat! No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> um, I'm just drinking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. honestly. Um, I'm not voting. Uh, I'm just trying to like keep up with the comments. Well, um, Brady Shout votes. Out. Brady I'm votes a great with me. Time. <laughs> you know, I would say that like when we just the idea of like putting but, these wines Curlew's together. Cool. Like I love Curlew. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. you'll, you'll try it down the road, but you know, like these, these two wines are really like straddles a, sort of like the line of what old world, new world looks yeah, like. And totally. if one or the other tried to do the other half or tried to, tried to cross over into a market where it feels like um, an old world producer where, where he has a different set of both rules and or set of grapes that he's working with yeah. is, is reaching for something that tastes like something new world. And then now an old world, a new world producer 
uh, youthful and sort of adventurous, um, using what he has as his own skill set, younger vines in all, in all of those things, uh, reaching towards old world practices, and he comes up with something like this. So. Uh, hold on, we may have had a... Is wine A curlew? No. No. Wine B is curlew. Correct. Correct. Great. I think the poll is wrong. <gasps> so let me just repost real quick. Yeah. Okay. And can you just explain what just happened? Oh, okay, God. So, Ooh, sorry about through, that. Let's, let's back it up. Oh. Wine A is? Wine A is Syrah, uh, Olivier Dumin. So from Saint Joseph, from the Northern Rhone Valley in France. That's uh, Syrah, that's 100% Syrah. And uh, that's. Yeah, and if you. you meaty, savory, yeah. dense. If you switch them up in your glasses, it's time to use your noses to figure this one out. Whatever one smells like flowers, that's the one that's coming from uh, France. And the one that smells more like a blackberry pie, that's the one that's coming from Washington. First and foremost. I mean, don't, don't swirl it and shake it up or anything. I'm saying just like, oh, that one is more floral. That's the one that he, is wine A. Yeah, and comparatively, oh when you God. look at the color... When you drop it down onto a white background. Totally. Wait, so is Saint A, Joseph. which one is A? St. Joseph. I think our card was wrong. Oh. No. Yeah, think, the most 2020 thing just happened where we have no. fake news. No. <laughs> on the card. The card is InfoWars. No. And <laughs> we, I think we have the card wrong. The card is wrong. <laughs> so yeah. Oh my God. Who uh, is B? Wait. Oh my God! So if you're following Curlew along at home, Curlew is should be wine B. Wine B. But it's not. Well. But it is not. We're, well, we're we're reposting. Sorry. <sighs> Sorry about that. Oh my God! Sorry, it's our last class. <laughs> well, but thank God we were is, spitting the whole time. This is yeah. what happens when you cram for finals. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. So if you're following along at home, again. Nelson, can you just for you following along at home and sort of like watching this all go down in flames? <laughs> uh, wine A that we poured for you is Syrah from France out of Saint Joseph by Olive, uh, Olivier Dumin. So that's Syrah, a hundred percent Syrah, dark, inky, inky, black fruit, meaty with some spice. Wine B <clears throat> is Curlew, Washington State. From Yakima, mostly Syrah with a little Viognier in it. A little bit, yeah. A little lighter in style, uh, but pretty on the nose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what we got. Ooh. All right. So. Did we vote? Yeah. Your yeah. favorite wine is. Okay, hold on a second. But well, I mean, yeah. Just, just point to the bottle. Point to the bottle. You know what? This yeah. one's my favorite. You. This one, oh, this is my favorite. This one's my favorite. Huh. I mean, we all, we all were split. Your first split. Yeah. Split vote. Yeah. It had to happen sometime. Yeah. <laughs> so Erica goes with St. Joseph. Yes. And I'm going for Curlew. Why, why'd you yeah. pick uh, St. Joseph? I love the florality of it. I love that it has a little extra something. It has so much more than just fruit. I think it's just a really, I'm excited for Thanksgiving. It smells like, it's like a wine that I would love to have with like a really big meal. You know, mm -hmm. it has like all of those like different sort of rosemary-esque spices. And I like, I, I just like a pretty wine yeah. sometimes. I mean, I love big and bold wines too, but this one just kind of calls to me. I really mm. like it. Yeah, I went with I went with the curly. I felt like it had a little more subtlety to it, uh, and I I felt like um, just behind the scenes something a little more, um, more nuance, allowing for other things to come through. But I liked just that it was a little softer. Yeah. Um, it was pretty on the nose, much like the the San Josef. But the finish was. Um, just strong enough. I think it all added up. Yeah. I think I think the D Olivier Demand from Saint Joseph was darker, deeper, dense with a long driving finish, and maybe I just wanted something that was just like 
like a softer, smooth landing for what it offered on the nose. Mm, yeah. Everything with the fruit, maybe it just sort of like went that way. And I yeah. can see how something dark, heavy, and dense can go a lot further. And maybe that's the reach, right? Yeah. I love it. Oh. <sighs> All right. Well, we have lots of love yeah. for both of you. <laughs> Okay, so uh, as, the, as the host of, <laughs> of all the wine shows, they love. Uh, they're asking for like style inspo. They're asking for uh, fashion tips. Have we talked but, about you? This is yeah. well, a few announcements. Yeah. First of all, just a few announcements. Number when well, I was number eight, we we reposted the, and the Saint Joseph is the winner. <gasps> the Saint Joseph. Yeah, there the you go. Whoa, okay. what? Uh, super exciting. Uh, announcement number two. Wings? I'm oh, sorry, what was that? <laughs> announcement number two is that Erica is going to move back to the East Coast. And this is like your last ever night at Canlos. And you are a, a remarkable, extraordinary person. And we're going to miss you so much. And you make every one of us oh. better. And mm. you make us all laugh and smile and like cry till we pee in our pants because you're the greatest and you make people feel so happy here and we're gonna miss you so <sighs> just leave for a little maybe but you're always welcome back because you. you are extraordinary baby come back yeah uh, <laughs> you know if, you know when we do last nights at the restaurant we always sort of like come up and I'm sure everyone has this like moment where we all have it, that chance to speak up and say yeah. what we love about her and I'm sure like like people at home and others that they're they're finally like when they finally see this or when you send that announcement out or let people and friends know um i just don't want to miss my opportunity to say how much i really enjoyed my time with you i always felt like you've been a young younger sister to me a little sister to me somebody that i can relate to on so many different levels of what our culture has done to us and yeah. for us um whether it's just like We're laughter and love <laughs> uh every part of our family uh, and then sort of like a familiar palette to say like, you know, I'm glad I have uh, a confidant and a trusted friend and partner that looks like me is a part of my world that's Filipina and is going to push the boundaries further for like all of us. Um, and there was like some bit of comfort in that. And I was re I'm really proud of you. The energy level that you bring to the floor and to our staff uh, is unmatched by many or anyone that I've seen. And then just a genuine care that you have for people that you serve, friends, uh, guests, and uh, animals alike. <laughs> uh, like truly remarkable and something to be always celebrated. So I'm gonna miss you so much. And I'm glad that we're doing this. I'm glad that like things shifted around that we're gonna be, have this opportunity to do like one final class, one last send off. Um, and I know things moved really quickly for you at the end. Um, yeah, but, so if there's anything that you know, Brady, no, you quick, want to say. All the a, comments right now are about Erica. About Erica. Okay, guys, <laughs> it's like, a, a quick Erica story. When you were like your first year here, we had, yes. we had like yeah. the general manager of a very famous world 50 best restaurant, super, 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 super fancy come dine here. And she saw me like, like kind of, um, I don't know, like feeling subservient to them or feeling like, oh, sir, like, oh, we're only camless and you're famous. And she like pulled me aside and like got in my face and said, what we are doing here is extraordinary and don't you dare believe anything less than, Kim. like she got in my face as a new employee and saying, don't you dare like not understand that what, uh, who our staff is and what Camless is, yeah. is one of the greatest in the world. Mm. And it was just the most beautiful, amazing moment uh, where you were like yeah. smacking me around. Yeah. And I'll never ever forget that. So thank you. Um, oh, Erica is the, the best. Yeah. Well, also, uh, we, we should be, we, we got to close this class out. Yeah. Do you want to say anything? Um, Quan's uh, was <laughs> my camera? favorite wing. Oh, go <laughs> on camera. Yeah. Do you want to? Yeah. Do you want to leave a receipt yeah. of your time here? Oh. <laughs> Actually, I really liked the honey togarashi <laughs> wing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's the only one I made. Um. Okay. Well, also I say uh, to everyone to the. To the 13,000 students who signed up for this crazy idea that we did not ever believe would become this big and special. To the thousands of people on wait lists that we never imagined would, would be a thing. Um, 
to the the embrace that this city has given our restaurant that is just trying the next creative thing to survive yeah. thank you we're humbled and honored by people's embrace of community college it was a wild haired idea that my brother and i had he's back there somewhere and uh you the city made it possible um thank you we have one more week this is the final class all classes will be available forever online wait when is the scavenger hunt the, so the scavenger the hunt stay tuned on instagram and facebook the scavenger hunt starts tuesday it's going to be a recreation of the 10 year or the 10 year anniversary of the original menu hunt in seattle we're going to do it. We're going to hide menus around the city. If you mm -hmm. find one, you get to come dine at Camelus at 1950 prices. At the end of the week, we're going to put together a multiple stage scavenger hunt mm -hmm. with the $5,000 grand prize. Stay tuned on social media. You guys, it's going to be so much fun. You, you honor us and you bless us with your love and support of this crazy restaurant in a pandemic, doing our darn best to do it. Yeah. Erica, we love you. We're going to miss you. Nelson, you've been a phenomenal host. Yeah, thank and you. You're Nelson. the best damn chef I've ever worked with. So, Aww. everyone, thank you and uh, have a great, great night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Happy semester. <laughs> Fall break. Oh my God. Time to party. Oh. Thank you.